today I will be talking about how our world is in a digital transformation. And I'm here, I'm here to ask you to embrace this digital transformation, because if you embrace it, you can also shape it. You can shape it towards the benefit of yourself or the benefit of others. And of course, both is fine. So my name is Robert Overweg, I create art, and I help companies in changing towards this more digital world. In the beginning of my presentation, I will be showing you a lot of examples of where you already see this digitization happening. So let's start the show. So digital is taking over. Um, maybe you, you know Hatsune Miku. Uh, she is this digital pop star, and the sound can go just a slightly bit higher. And um, there, she has millions of fans, mainly in the Asian market, and people can sing together with her every word of her lyrics. And these people go really crazy about her. And you could say that this is an Asian phenomenon, and maybe that, it's, that these sort of crazy things happen more over there. But <laughs> she already visited David Letterman. So you see this crazy phenomena already moving into the Western world as well. And uh, in a more recent example, this is a game character from the uh, game Final Fantasy, but she is also a Louis Vuitton model, and she gives her own interviews. So it's a crazy world already. And at the other side of the world, people are 3D scanning their children, objects around them, and you can do that really easily just with a simple application. Application is called 123D Catch. You just take 20-something photographs, the app stitches it together, and then you have a 3D scan of your kid. And um, of course you can scan your kid or, <laughs> or you can scan other stuff. So people all around the world are already documenting these things. And this guy, this guy went to a fair, it's a CES, and he had his face 3D scanned and now he ends up in a computer game, in a really popular game right now, Fallout 4. So he's walking around as his own avatar in this computer game. And Obama, instead of having a normal photograph being taken of him, he, had, he has a, a 3D scan made of his face through a setup that you can see here. And for me, where it becomes really interesting is where the physical and the virtual world sort of transform into each other or where they um, mix together. And that's what you see here. The company Rescape has been acquired by Oculus. And um, the most interesting thing for me here is when your friends walk into the view of your phone, <laughs> that they walk into the view as avatars. So the physical and the virtual world is really mixed here. And you can have different experience while you are in this physical space. And if you look back at the movie Avatar, it cost $300 million to make. And James Cameron said, I can only make this movie if I have the right equipment. And uh, they built him this. So this is a camera. And through this camera, he could look from the physical world into the virtual world. And if you make the comparison back to the previous example, then it's almost the same, but of course, still in lower quality for us. But it runs on your, on your own iPhone already, the same sort of software. So it's moving really fast. And uh, Project Tango is a project by Google. And they will add uh, two cameras on your tablet. And when you walk around with your tablet, it will 3D scan your environment. So you will 3D map, for an example, this space. And people will probably be doing this at home because this could end up on your smartphone or on your tablet. And when the driverless car from Google drives around, it's constantly scanning the environment. And this is actually what he sees. So he gathers one gigabyte of data each second. So it's constantly scanning and constantly scraping the data. And you can't tell me that uh, they won't be using these kind of data files later in the future. And other companies have created 360-degree cameras, and through those cameras you can put it here, and then when you're sitting at home, you could experience like how it is to stand here on the stage. And John is building this, Nokia, Google again, so a lot of companies are working on this. So when you see all of these things combined, then I believe that we will, um, we will experience these recordings or simulations through virtual reality. And of course, virtual reality, it's not there yet. 
and uh, it will probably take another couple of years for it will uh, be among the masses, among uh, many people. But Facebook bought Oculus for $2 billion. Um, Sony jumped on the bandwagon. This virtual reality train is leaving. And every 12 to 14 months, this technology gets better. Uh, it's improved in uh, latency, the quality gets better, and the price will eventually drop as well. So what Google did, they already handed out 500,000 headsets to schools. And those kids in school, they can go to, uh, for an example, the Great Wall of China, and the teacher can select where, where they are going, and then together they can be in this virtual school trip. And the teacher can ask questions about what is happening, what they see. And um, so it can be the Great Wall of China or anything they want, or maybe even in a deep sea. And, and of course, you can also drive a Formula One car in VR, and it feels like you are really doing that. Or look over the shoulder of Max Verstappen and see how he is performing. That's also pretty crazy. Or maybe uh, soccer, we can transform soccer matches into virtual reality simulations. So for you, you can actually stand on the field and feel how it is to score as Messi or how it is to stop a goal as a goalkeeper. And this is already a reality, so we are already here. Or you can go to a concert, but you don't need to leave your room or leave your house. You, you can just sit at home, put on your headset, and then when Kanye West raps towards the camera, it will feel like he is rapping towards you. Um, but while all of this is pretty cool, and um, this is entertainment, and I love to create entertaining stuff. I love to create stuff that makes you feel laugh, uh, which makes you laugh. But um, it's also interesting if we can do m a little bit more. So it was 2008. I was in the museum in New York, and then I found this game. It's a game called Snow World, and in Snow World, you need to throw snowballs towards snowmen and penguins. And you move through these ice capes, and uh, now you're thinking, okay, what's the big deal? They use this game for children who have burn wounds. And um, these burn wounds need to be changed, the bandages need to be changed like every day. And that causes them excruciating pain. Uh, but when they play this game in virtual reality, they feel less of the pain. So actually, through virtual reality and a little bit of distraction, we are making their lives better. And when I saw this, I was like, whoa, if you can do these sort of things, I really need to get on this program as well. So what is then important to do? Uh, first, gather knowledge uh, of what is possible. And this has a little bit to do with manipulating the mind, maybe. So we started looking into what um, has already been done in this field. This is a study by Elizabeth Loftus. It's called Lost in the Mall. And what she did, she had um, 24 people. Uh, she interviewed them and she wrote down four childhood memories. And she wrote them down on paper. And she gave them to them. Uh, but one of the childhood memories was false. And then she interviewed those people. And seven out of the 24 people started to have recollections of that false childhood memory. So I'd like to show you a video of Chris. And there should be audio with this. I remember getting lost and I was crying. And um, I remember that day, I was so scared, I thought I'd never see my family again. I knew I was in real trouble. I remember the stores, baby, I sort of remember the stores. Uh, an older man approached me, he was tall, and I don't know his age, but he was older. Um, he, he had a flannel shirt on. Um, I remember the flannel shirt. And uh, I remember my mom told me never to do that again. So how great is it that Chris can remember this older gentleman who had his flannel shirt on? Well, that never happened. So it's quite easy for us to manipulate the mind and implant false memories in that way. And then we um, did our research, and this is existing research, not by us, uh, into the more visual field. So, for an example, if I take a photograph as you here in the audience, but then as an individual, and then together with your father, and I Photoshop you in a hot air balloon then 50% of the audience will start to have recollections of that event. You will think, ah, oh, the weather was so great, maybe we even had a uh, popsicle, ice cream. Uh, well, that never happened. So we are quite easy to manipulate. Now, we also did our own research, because then virtual reality comes around the corner. And we proved, together with the University of Utrecht, 
um, that it is possible to adjust existing memories through virtual reality replays. So we can alter the mind. Uh, what we did, we had soccer players kick a ball like 20 times towards a goalpost, and then we showed them the replays of their performance. But we increased and decreased um, the accuracy of their kicks. And we did that by two times or by one and a half times. We made it better or worse. And they believed anything we showed them. So that's quite interesting. Um, but what is the most interesting is that we also could make them feel better or worse about themselves. And then if you look at the possibility to adjust existing memories through virtual reality, then we were wondering, what if we can adjust existing memories of traumatic experiences? Then we can really add something to the world. So, for an example, you've been in this car crash, and um, normally when you've been in something like this, and luckily you survived, you could have anxieties. Anxieties like hyperventilation, flashbacks, and maybe you're even afraid to drive a car. So that's a real strain on your quality of life. So what we built is we built this traumatic treatment uh, experience in virtual reality. What we do is we put a photograph in front of your face in VR. And this photograph reminds you of the traumatic experience. At the same time, we let you perform a task with your hands. Uh, it's called a dual task. And you need to sort shapes and put them in the designated holes. <coughs> and because, uh, because your hands are busy with this task, it desensitizes the part in your brain which is responsible for the traumatic uh, memory. So in a way, if we use this technology and ethical thinking together, then we can treat people and make people better. So um, we've done our first pilot study already, and uh, the results seem really promising. Currently, we are awaiting uh, approval from the ethical commission, and then we can test it on uh, an extra large group of patients. Now, I've got one more thing we're working on. So imagine this guy. Uh, he has clogged arteries, and um, because he has these clogged arteries, he can only walk for 200 meters, and then he literally needs to pass his life because his legs hurt too much, and he can't walk on. So, um, and he can't walk on. So he can do two things. Either he can have surgery, or he can have um, treatment, and then he needs to walk through the pain. Uh, and because it's really painful, that's really difficult to do. So what we developed is we put the patient on a treadmill, we put him in VR, and we tell him that lighthouse you see over there, that is your 200 meter mark. But then we play a trick on his mind, and when he approaches it, we just slightly put the lighthouse into the distance. So without him noticing, of course. So he thinks, well, I should be able to make it towards the 200 meter mark, but actually, maybe he's already passed it. And at the same time, we put birds in the sky and beautiful things to distract him from the pain. And, well, that, that's my story. Um, that's why I'm here. I'm asking you guys to embrace this digital transformation and see all of the possibilities that there are. And um, join us in uh, making people better through virtual reality and help shape this change. And we are open sourcing all of our research and all of the other stuff we find interesting as well, which might help you as well. And um, that's it for me. Thank you very much.